Okay, so um, today we are going to be looking at cascading style sheet. Cascading style sheet. CSS is very, very important. Uh, CSS is the language we use to style an HTML document. So it actually describes the HTML elements, how they should be displayed. It describes how the HTML element should be displayed on the screen or any device that you're using to look at it. So that's basically what we're going to be uh, looking at. Uh, please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen, yes. Okay, so I'm going to be, uh, this is the application that we have. This is the index.html. We have three pages, the index page, uh, the form page, the, uh, the contact us page. So those are the three pages that we have. And um, we're going to be linking up these pages. We already have the links to them. This is Ahhref. So this is purely HTML document that states how our website should, the content, the elements of the website. That's what these are, the HTML does. But to make it look fine, to make this content, the elements look fine, we need what we call the CSS. So I'm going to quickly right click on at the middle and say open with live server so that we'll see the output of that very uh, HTML code that we have. So this is the output. These are the links, the H1. And you can see that this HTML does not have styling. So we just have collection of elements, the ahrefs for the links, the H1, the P tag, the H2 tag, the list or the bullet, or you call it the uh, unordered list, the H3, and the ordered list, and you have your H4, and the table, and then image. So this is exactly what we have here, the ahref for the links, the H1, the P tag, the H2, the unordered list, uh, the ordered list, the H4, the table, and finally the image. So this various elements or various tags are what we are able to see here so now we want to make this to look beautiful and in order to style it to make it look beautiful we're going to be using what we call css and there are three ways we can use to implement our css three ways and we have what we call the internal the external and the inline so we're going to be starting with the one that is not good enough, which is the inline. So the, in the inline way of implementing CSS, you just come to the element that you want to write the CSS into. Say the head one. I want this head one to have a color. So I can simply say, come into the tag here, click here, space, and then I type in style and say that my style is equal to something. So what is it equal to? I'm going to assign a property of color, the value of red. So the way you write the CSS, you have to have a property and the value of that property. So that property you want to uh, style or the property you want to give a style, you give it the value that you want it to have. So this is what we call internal styling. So if I come down here, and I simply do Control S to save. If I get back to my website, I'm gonna see now, you can see now, this is the color. So the color has changed because I did what we call inline styling. I simply got into the very tag or the element I want to style. I use the keyword or the attribute and style equal to, then I give it a property, the one I want to style, colon then the value so i'm going to give this one the value of say um, yellow so once i save and i come back here you see now this is now yellow so that is how you do what you call inline styling that is inline styling so the other way of styling your website is by using what we call internal styling internal and in internal styling you simply come to the head so when I was describing the basic HTML, I said inside the head, you have the title, but it's not only the title that is in the head. You also have the metas and the links, the
the you can also put your style there so for internal styling you're going to be using what we call the style tag so you can simply say style then you close it out so opening and closing style just the way you do the other one so for this very one anything you want to style let's say you want to style this h3 so you put the selector the selector is the element you want to style so i'm going to say h3 because that's what i want to style so once i say that i'm going to open a curly bracket and close it out as well then i'm going to put the property that i want to style so which property i want to assign a color to it and what color do i want to assign i want to assign red okay so this is how you do internal style so what this means is that it's going to come into this and check for h3 this is where we have h3 the content is our branches and it's going to assign it this uh, value of red to its property of color so the color of these our uh, branches is now going to be red so if i save this now and i get back here you see our branches is now red so that is what we call internal styling so with this this background of white i'm going to remove it because you're not supposed to be writing anything like bg color white so rather inside here i'm going to be assigning the body and i'm going to be assigning it a background color so if you want to assign background color you can simply say background color you can see it here then i'll assign a color i'm simply going to give it the color of aquamarine so i'll save now so when i now get back to this you can see that the background now is now aquamarine so you can either use the inline styling this is called inline styling it is not very good because you have to be doing this for every element and you can see that it's a combination of both the style and the html so it makes it cluttered so you can use this inline styling you can also use what we call the internal styling internal styling is better but the best is what we call the external styling the external styling is the one that you have to write in another page and this time around we created this style.css for it so this is where we're going to be writing our style so instead of having my style here in the head section i'm going to copy out all these because i don't want it to be here i'm going to um, cut it out so if i now save again you can see that the style will go out it's no longer there but i want to now supply it from the style.css which is the external styling method so here i'm gonna simply paste that style but once you're putting it in this your very style or css you make sure that you don't put that very style tag because because you save this as a dot css it already knows that this is a style sheet so you don't need to put this so once you save this now you come back here you have to make a reference to this here so in order to make this reference i will come here and use what we call the link element so i'm gonna say link then i'm gonna say link rel so what is the relationship of this link tag this is going to be a style style sheet so make sure you get the spelling of the style well. so what's the relationship of this style sheet so it's gonna be a style sheet and you're gonna give it a href so the link is going to be the name of the style sheet and the name of our style sheet is style.css so i'm going to simply say style.css so this is how you link up that very style so if you had saved this with my style.css this would have been my style.css so if you save this back with this very link it will see this style of css that you've written here so that it will give back the background that we have so make sure that you save this and also make sure that you save this one so once you do that and you get back you see the background is back again and the uh, h3 is having our branches as red which are the styles that you wrote inside here so going forward we are going to make sure that all the styles are here so I'm going to come back here now. This is my head one that I put this color. I'm going to take it out. 
because I don't want the style of the head one to be here. So I'm going to take it out. Also, this P tag that I styled here, I don't want it. I want separation of concern. Because with this one now, I can simply use that same style. Once I copy what is here in this index.html and put it in my contact us inside the header, you're going to see that the same style that the index has, the contact us is going to have that same style. So I'm going to come here and remove this background color blue. Now I want the background colors to be consistent. So I also go to my form.html under the head and I also put this very link rail and I will save and I also take out this color here. So when I finish saving all this now, if I get back to my page, you can see now that the code incorporated does not have a style because I removed the inline styling for it and for this, and for this one. But if I go to the various pages, I will see that all of them are having the same background color. You can see the background color of this is also the same with this. So all of them are seeing the same style now because all of them are looking at the same style sheet, which is the style of CSS. And you can only do this with the external style, which is the best way. So I'm going to come in here now. I'm bringing the style of the H1 now. So I'm going to say H1, which is the selector. So this is the syntax of every uh, the syntax of every HTML, uh, CSS is you put the selector. Selector simply means the element you want to start. So I'll say H1, that is what I want to start. Then I'll do opening and closing coiling brackets. Then I'll put the property I want to start, say the color. Then I'll assign it a value. So what do I want the H1 to have? I want the H1 to be blue. So I'm going to say blue. Once I say blue, I'll save. Now I want my background to be a grayish color. I don't want it to be. I want it to be uh, to be noticeable when you're looking at it. So I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna use this uh, an antique white so that it will be very light. So once I save now, I get back now. So it's now antique white. You can see it, and you can see that the head one now is having blue color. So if I click on all of them, you can see that they are having consistent color. All the head ones are having blue color. All the head twos black. All the head threes red. So that is one uh, CSS. We are using it to look at all the other uh, uh, what's it called? All the other pages. So you can see there is consistency now in the styles. So there are many other styles that you can assign. So Every style that you are assigning affects all the three pages. So I can come here and say text, text align. So I want to align my text to be center. Okay, text align. I want it to be center. So please, once you finish writing one, always close it out with a semicolon so test align center so i'm going to save this and i'll get back so you can see now that this text is now aligned to the center and if i go to the next page i can also see that all the ahead ones are all aligned to the center you can see application form is at the middle code incorporated is at the middle so the more you you write in your uh, css it will get affected with the other side. So I'm going to let you practice this and show me so that I'll see whether you've learned the three ways of bringing in CSS. So you remember the number one way is by writing it into the various elements. We call it inline. Number two is by writing it in the head using the star tags. We call it the internal. And number three is by creating a file separately and, and saving it with the extension .css and writing out the code using the syntax and the syntax is simply the selector, curly brackets, property and value. So this is the syntax of CSS. You have your what? Selector. We are going to be looking at the different forms of selector. What we just did now is what we call the element selectors. Here we have the body S3, UL, all those elements that you have in CSS. But we're going to be looking at class. Uh, we're going to be looking at ID selector. 
we're going to be looking at other selectors. So once you write your selector, you put your closing, opening and closing curly brackets. You write the property you want to say the property could be color or anything. So it could be the height, it could be the test alignment or anything. So you write the property, then you put your, sem uh, your colon, then you write the value. The value is simply the value you are assigning that property. Then you close it out with your normal semicolon. So this is how you you um, you 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 style. So let's say I want to style my H2. So the selector now is H2. So I replace that selector with H2. The property is the is the what I want to style. Let's say I want to give it a color. Color is the property. So the value is the value I'm assigning to the color. So what value do I want to assign to the color? So I say green. So what it's going to do is that everywhere it sees my H2, it's going to color it green. So if I get back here, I'm going to see that my H2 becomes green in any uh, page that I used H2. This is where I used H2. You can see it's not green. So that is what happens. So if I go to this one, the same thing. So my H2 is now green, so I can get back and also align this very H2. I can do the text align. That means I want the text to be aligned to the center. So I can simply do text align, colon, then I tell it where I want it to be. So you can see there are actually many options. It's not only center, but you can take it anywhere you want. So I'm going to also assign center to it and save so now when i get back to my google chrome you can see that this is now at the center so we're going to be using this style to, going forward to style our web pages is it clear yes absolutely clear okay so i'm gonna uh, allow you demonstrate the three ways and we can move from there is that okay with you it's super fine okay thank you Gonna stop sharing now so that we can uh, test it. Might share my screen. Yeah, give me a minute. Should I share my screen? 